morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this feast day of St. Maximilian Kolbe, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr, St. Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary, and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed, even until death, to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. In their passing away was thought an affliction, in their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial sufferings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Amen. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Precious of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, no man is dependable. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O oh Lord, I am your servant. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the faithful ones.
If you hate your life in this world, you will preserve it to eternal life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. I was not, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that wherever you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Maximilian Kolbe had a little bit of a pathway that was laid before him very early on in his life. He was actually a very chaotic kid. None of you have ever dealt with that, I'm sure. But it got to the point where he was five, six years old, and his mother looked at him and said, you know, what's going to become of you? And this cut, a question actually cut right to his heart. And he actually really disturbed him as a young child, just like, what is going to become of me? And in the midst of all of this, Our Lady appeared to him. Yeah, at that tender age. And said, basically, uh, well, she didn't really say much, actually. She held out two crowns. One was a white one, signifying purity of life and living out that gospel message, you know, in one particular way. The other other, which was the color I was, I'm wearing now, was red, which signifies what? Hey, look, you're all awake. All right, fantastic. Sometimes I wonder, right? No, uh, right, martyrdom. And so she's like, which one do you want? And he goes, give me both. Bold statement, but onward he went from there. And St. Maximilian began to pursue this pathway that was laid out before him that led him straight into the priesthood. But during the course of his time in training for the priesthood, he saw that there was a lot of battles around living the truth of our faith. In particular, uh, great hostilities in Rome, demonstrations against the faith, basically denigrating all of our, you know, gifts and graces that were supposed to be ours, to the point that he said, okay, well, if we're going to win this battle, we're not going to win it by traditional means. We're going to win it by the fact we're going to seek out that help of our Blessed Mother. Because obviously, if Our Lady appears to you, you're going to be pretty close to her the rest of your life, right? So he founded, in 1917, the Militia Immaculata, which was all about winning the world for Jesus through Mary. Now, if that phrase, uh, Jesus through Mary, sounds a little familiar, it's because it should ring a bell in our hearts and minds of Marian consecration. And for St. Maximilian Colby, this was going to be the way that the world was going to be changed. Because what did St. Louis de Montfort say about Marian consecration? It was the surest, quickest, fastest way to become saints. Because as opposed to the way of chiseling away at our, at our own self and going slowly in that way. Marian consecration was allowing ourselves to be poured into the mold of Our Lady, who is the perfect disciple, and accelerating the process of becoming a saint. 
Not a bad idea. And for this, he also employed promotion of the miraculous medal that was given to St. Catherine Lavery. But that's a whole other story that I'm not going to touch today, because otherwise I'm going to take you down a real rabbit hole. But during the course of his life, he continued to promote this goodness, and he used all means as, it, as, as his, at his availability. Being a conventional Franciscan friar, he continued to build up everything, knowing the importance of media, to the point where he got a printing press and started printing all of these things to help uh, the people of Poland really grow in their faith and Marian devotion. And from the years, uh, basically, that occurred in between World War I and World War II, St. Maximilian could almost be single-handedly said through him and his friars, the reason that Marian consecration grew so much during that period. And certainly the po people of Poland would need it because guess what happens September 1st, 1939? Over the, over the uh, border of Poland comes Nazi Germany and the occupation begins. Their hearts were almost being prepared by Kolbe. He was the instrument, as it were. And he often talked about this continued growth of being the instrument in Our Lady's hands. You know, and obviously Jesus' hands because in his mind it was one and the same. Because Mary was always going to do our Lord's will perfectly. So this is what he did. Even to the point where it got a little detrimental. Because Maximilian wasn't one to be quiet. I don't know if you know this. You know anybody who doesn't be quiet sometimes? Well, he wasn't quiet. And he actually got into that point where he started criticizing the Nazis for obvious reasons. And that put him on the radar. Before, it, not too long after that, he, they came to his monastery, literally translated into our own English, because I can't say it in Polish to save my life called Marytown, and he basically was then pulled out of there and sent to Auschwitz. Now, if that sounds familiar, we just talked about St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross, St. Edith Stein going through the same treatment. But when Maximilian got there and was serving those uh, who were entrusted to his care as best he could, there came a point where his life became, was put on the line. Because... They had a rule in Auschwitz. If one escaped, 10 would go to the starvation bunker in his place to deter anybody from trying to escape. Well, one day a prisoner died in a remote part of the camp, and they thought he, thought he had escaped. So they rounded everybody up, and here we go. 10 are going to go to the starvation bunker, and that's going to be the ball game. During the course of this happening, the commandant of the camp picked out a young father who then proceeded to drop to his knees, begging for his life, saying, I have you know, a wife, I have children, please don't do this. Maximilian stepped forward out of the line and looked at the camp commandant and basically just said, in no short order, I'll take his place. The commandant, for whatever reason, that, who was not known exactly for negotiation, accepted the trade. The young father ultimately would be at Colby's uh, canonization in Rome years later in, 1980, in the 1980s. But from there, Colby went down into the bunker with the other nine, except something happened. Usually, people down in that bunker lasted no more than a day or two, maybe three at most. Colby led them in prayers, hymns, and everything that he could trying to keep their spirits raised and entrusting them to the care of God. Two weeks later, him and three others were still alive, much to the chagrin of the uh, Nazis who were keeping, how, uh, keeping watch over the bunker. They had never seen anything like this, and quite frankly, they were rather terrified. So when the order came down to take Colby's life by a shot of carbolic acid into his veins, they walked in in fear and trembling, where Colby just looked up at them, extended his arm, lifted up everything, and just said, do what you're here to do. He gave his very life to serve our Lord. And 
his martyr's crown came about that day in Auschwitz. Literally a place that was hell on earth in the 1940s. But you gotta wonder, what was it that gave him the strength that he had? The ability to stay in the fight in the midst of this hell on earth. It's the same things that are available to you and I. And that same thing is that relationship with Jesus through Mary. You and I can very easily, just like Maximilian Colby, consecrate ourselves to Our Lady and ask her to lead us straight to her son, to transform us from the inside out, that we are molded into those perfect disciples that God has made us to be. That is not beyond our ability at all. That just comes down to a simple act of consecration and asking our hearts to be transformed. We're in fact made for that conversion of heart. Because here's the thing, dear friends, like Maximilian Kolbe, if we become the instruments in the hands of our Lord, in the hands of Our Lady, and start to serve how they desire us to serve in the world, guess what happens? Borderline miracles in our midst. Because it's not us who's acting, it's God himself acting through her intercession in our world to bring about what heaven desires. Because we're in conformity with the will of God. This is the way we get transformed. Not by our own power, not by our own strength, but by understanding that Our Lady is the key. That humility to be molded into another, another our uh, Blessed Mother, so to speak, and at least in the case of us being transformed by her virtues, her gifts, and everything else, so that we too can say, you know, again, I'm here to serve. Be it done unto me according to thy word. This is very possible. As a matter of fact, it's right there at our fingertips. So the question we face then on this feast day is, are we willing to go there? Are we willing to allow ourselves to be transformed from the inside out? to become who God has made us to be through this process that the saints have deemed is a pathway to be quickly made into a saint. This is right there for each and every one of us. But he can't do that, our Lord can't do that, our Lady can't do that without a simple yes. And without a real openness to allowing ourselves to be transformed. Maximilian did that from a very young age, and it led him all over the world. There are more stories I could tell, but I also respect the fact it's 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. But understand this, dear friends. All of us, no matter where we are, what we're doing, we are called to step out in faith and serve the Lord in the manner he desires. So with that in mind, Understanding the importance of Our Lady and St. Maximilian's life to become that perfect disciple of Jesus, let us ask for his intercession today as we pray together. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us bring our prayers before him this day, that the baptized may be faithful to love of God and neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all who serve God may live according to the laws of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who are strangers, immigrants, and refugees may find welcome among God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
that the sick may hold fast to God in their suffering. We pray to the Lord, Lord that we may join all people of faith and service to our neighbors. We pray to the Lord, Lord that through Our Lady's intercession we may become faithful disciples of Jesus in the midst of our world. We pray to the Lord, Lord that the dead may behold the fullness of God's promise to Israel. We pray to the Lord. As we lift up Jean Sopernor in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. God our Father, transform our hearts through the inside from the inside out that we may become more faithful followers of your Son, Jesus, through the intercession of Our Lady, and most especially the intercession of St. Maximilian Kolbe on this his feast day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual train. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our very lives to you through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy. 
holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends, says the Lord. Now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian received from this holy banquet. Through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Have a great day, everyone.